Hey everyone, Adam here. It's been a long time, uh, a little bit uh, over a year now. Um, COVID hit and uh, like everyone else out there, I was just trying to navigate uh, raising a family, work life, my wife's job, just everything kind of converging all at once uh, during the pandemic. So things are sort of back to normal now. Kids are at least back in school, so now I kind of have a quiet space or a quiet time to actually record some of these videos. So I wanted to get back into it. Now just a very quick update. As you already know, this channel has been pretty much moving towards a vlog style channel, I guess, uh, you know, for, for a while now. Um, basically, I just talk about random stuff. Uh, it can be anywhere from uh, me reviewing a product that for whatever reason I have felt inspired to review this particular product, all the way to just random thoughts on various topics. And that will pretty much uh, continue. Okay, uh, enough about the update and where things are heading. Um, let's get started. Now, this is going to be a very, very broad overview on this topic, uh, and I may dive into uh, deeper thoughts on some of, the, some of these concepts, uh, perhaps in future videos. But for now, this is just a very broad overview. Now, before we begin, uh, it's very, very important to basically recognize that there are things in our life that take time. And there are things in our life that we choose to do or engage in uh, that take time as well. So again, this is not an exhaustive list, but here are some just very quick examples, right? Uh, owning a dog, uh, that's gonna take time. You're gonna have to take care of the dog. Uh, you're gonna have to walk the dog, feed the dog. There's a bare minimum level of time commitment to keep the dog alive. Uh, owning a horse, uh, that might be an even bigger project because now you've got to maintain the horse, you've got to maintain the space for the horse. Uh, you may have to have a barn associated with the horse, a truck to haul the horse. The list goes on and on and on uh, when you start looking at uh, possibly owning a horse. Owning a house is a lot more of a time commitment than renting. If you have an issue while you're renting, hopefully, if you have a decent landlord, uh, you will just get that problem taken care of. Uh, when you own your own house, um, then you are responsible for all of that maintenance and all of the care that goes around the house. And that can be a big time commitment. Another big one is having kids. Um, you know, it, it to, uh, to support kids um, is a tremendous amount of work and a, and a huge time commitment uh, when you are going to uh, make the decision to actually have kids. Now to be clear, I am not saying that any of these things are inherently bad, um, but um, my point is, is that we just have to recognize uh, that these items take a tremendous amount of time. Uh, and I'm not saying not to have kids, not to have a horse, not to have a dog. I'm not saying any of that. Uh, what I am saying is that we just have to recognize that these are very, very big time commitments. Oftentimes I see people jump into something without they may think about the monetary or the money value associated with it, right? Like buying a dog, for example. How much money does that dog cost? But very few people, I think, think all the way through of how much is this dog going to cost me for the next 10 plus years? Or uh, an even bigger challenge is how much time is this dog going to cost me for the next 10 plus years? The other thing is, at least what I outlined on this very quick list, is that usually these items are more of a higher priority. Um, they are going to take time away from other things that you may enjoy doing uh, just because like uh, example with kids, you're trying to keep your kids alive, right? You need to feed them. That's a huge time commitment. So there's, there's a, a tr that's going to be, or at least it should be, uh, a very um, high on your priority list. Same with the dog and same with the horse. Um, and even the house, like you probably want to maintain it. Uh, uh, and again, all of these things uh, are just going to take time. And here's the point of this video is that I wanted to talk about one, if you are thinking about um, anything you're going to do, it doesn't have to be anything on this list, but any next time you're thinking about acquiring something or doing something, uh, just take the time, get it, take the time to think about how much time that may take up. And are you okay with the time that it may cut into other potential activities or things that you want to do. Again, there's nothing wrong with all of these things. Just be aware uh, that these things do take time. 
And there's also tricks and tips uh, to manage a lot of these things and to maybe give you back some of, of the time um, or at least maybe some of these things won't take up as much time um, uh, as you kind of think through some of these things. So what in the world am I talking about? All right, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a dog, right? You could hire a dog walker or someone who comes in, uh, that comes in and takes care of your dog. Uh, and maybe that's something you have to do if you're at work for 10 hours a day. Um, another thing is, uh, let's say you really like horses instead of like owning the entire farm, right? Like you have a barn, you're doing all the hay you're doing, I don't know. I, obviously I don't own a horse, but whatever is associated with owning a horse, it sounds like it's a lot of work, right? So instead of doing all of that, having the space for the horse, the truck to haul the horse to the vet, uh, think of another solution, right? Maybe another solution could be uh, owning a horse, but having it on a boarding farm. So basically maybe the boarding farm is an hour away from your house. And then when you feel like visiting your horse, you just go to the boarding farm and ride your horse, visit your horse. Uh, and that might be a very good solution um, that would take up a lot less time. Uh, owning a house, um, you can hire a contractor to fix things up, right? I mean, a lot of us do this already if the project's way above our, our scope of, of and our knowledge of how to fix something. But even if something is small to fix, uh, it may be of your interest to actually hire someone to do it um, if, if you want, because uh, it may uh, take a lot less time. I'll give you a very quick example. Uh, I had a sink uh, where I wanted to reinstall a new faucet and uh, it looked like a very simple project. I wanted to try to take off the bolts uh, underneath the sink and they were just kind of rusted on. And at that point, like I could have dealt with it, but something that may have been only like a, like an hour project may have turned into a four or five hour project. So at that point I just said, you know what? It's not worth my time. I know I'm paying a little bit extra. I think it was a hundred bucks. Some people may feel that that's a rip off. I get it, but I had someone come in and, and just install the new faucet for me. Uh, it was just, I could do it during my working hours. And it was just something that I didn't have to worry about. So for me, that was totally worth the hundred dollars. Uh, if you own a house, you could uh, hiring, uh, hire a cleaning service um, and uh, you could hire a, a mowing service or even a plow service if you live in an area that gets snow. Uh, if you have kids, uh, you can hire a, a babysitter um, and you can uh, hire maybe a nanny or maybe you're going to use a daycare service. And again, if you're working, you might be already utilizing some of these things. Uh, but what I'm talking about is maybe on a weekend, maybe, you know, example, my wife and I, before the pandemic, we would make it routine at least once a month. We would hire a babysitter for four hours and we would go do something that we would want to do. Uh, and and, you know, sometimes we would actually do that twice a month and that felt great. So uh, there is something like that that you can do to give you time to do some of the other stuff that you may want to do. Now, the major issue with this, and I can already hear people complaining, is everything that I've talked about uh, for solutions cost money. And a lot of people may not have the money to be able to support all of this. I totally get that. Um, and even myself, like I, like I don't, I'm not a millionaire. Like I can't, like I have to pick and choose uh, where and how I want to spend my money and also my time. So there, you know, it's not like I have an endless supply of cash where I can just be like, oh yeah, I'll hire a loan service. I'll hire a cleaning service. I'll hire this and that. Um, no. Uh, there are limits for everyone. So again, it's just uh, kind of picking these things with, uh, uh, with intentionality. So one of the things that I do is I'll try to figure out um, where I can get the biggest bang for my buck uh, when trying to buy time. Um, and I know there's this old saying that you can't buy time. Time is our most precious resource. I get that. I agree with that to a certain extent, but there are, I, I don't, I do think that you can buy, uh, things that will allow you to, um, I don't know how to word this, but, uh, essentially reallocate time to do the things that you want to do. And we've been doing this all along in our society, right? Like you buy a dishwasher 
to help you wash dishes much faster, right? That's why we have a dishwasher. Uh, before the dishwasher, you wash everything by hand. It may take like, you know, half an hour. Hopefully with the dishwasher, you just load it up, maybe it takes 10 minutes and you just saved 20 minutes worth of time. So you bought this item uh, to rate allocate and uh, save, it'd be a lot more efficient and save time. Back to what I was saying. Um, I find the biggest bang for my buck uh, when I'm trying to by time, for lack of a better term. Um, and so, you know, let's give a quick example, right? Like, so let's say I have $100 uh, per month that I'm willing to put towards a service, all right? So let's say uh, I have a lot of kids, I'm doing bed sheets and stuff. So let's say I spend five hours a week on laundry, all right? So in a month, right, times four, that's gonna be 20 hours per month that I'm spending uh, on laundry, and again, I'm not saying this is real. I'm just saying that this is made up and just to give you an idea. So let's say I find a laundry service that will do all of my laundry for me for $75 for the month. Okay, that's great. That's under that $100 threshold that I set. Let's say I spend two hours a week mowing, all right? Um, and that will basically be eight hours per month. Uh, but let's say the mowing service is a little bit more expensive. Let's say that's $100 per month. Okay, so now it's gonna save me eight hours. Um, so the laundry service is definitely a better value uh, for my time. Um, and then let's also throw in another one. Let's say um, uh, I don't like shopping um, and uh, I, I shop uh, maybe um, two hours per week at the grocery store. So again, that's another eight hours per month. Um, and in order to have curbside pickup, maybe in a, it's an extra $25 per month premium, right? So I just go online and I just pick my items. And then when I show up at the store, they just load it in my trunk, right? And that could save me a lot of time, especially if you can automate your grocery list and have a, a saved grocery list. You know, as we break down these numbers, right? If you hate mowing, like even though that's more expensive, but like, let's say you just can't stand mowing. Remember that was $100 for the month. Pick that. Just go with it. Like if you don't mind the other tasks, even if they take more time, or if you get joy out of doing laundry or going shopping, pick the mowing, you know? So you have to kind of weigh that in as well. Um, if you're looking to just save, like let's say you hate all three equally, and you just want to save the most amount of time to do other things, like record YouTube videos, um, then you would basically pick the laundry service and you would uh, pick the shopping, right? Because the laundry service was $75 per month and the uh, um, uh, the curbside pickup was uh, an extra $25 per month premium, right? So. Um, you can mix and match and basically break down and figure out what you like doing. Me personally, uh, I like mowing. I like the exercise. Uh, so I don't have a mowing service. I actually uh, have a mower and I hand mow my entire lawn. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what I've decided to do. But uh, again, if you have a huge lawn or if you hate mowing, then by all means, you know, pick the, the mowing service. So to wrap everything up, uh, basically, um, when you're adding anything extra in your life, uh, just think about the monetary value, right? The upfront cost, but more importantly, really think about the time value. Um, and if the time value is not something that you want to accept, then think of ways of reducing that time value. And more than likely, not always, uh, but more than likely, um, that may come with an extra monetary value to, uh, uh, to kind of outsource a lot of these projects, meaning that um, it's gonna cost you a little bit more money uh, to, to hire or to find solutions for these. Again, not always, but um, um, that is, at least the examples I gave in this video, uh, certainly seems to be the case. Um, and I do feel that, that a lot of people, as I said, uh, it really uh, ignore the time component um, whenever they are looking to uh, uh, to uh, whenever they are looking at some of these things. And again, you know, if you enjoy it, do it, but just take the time value into consideration. All right, that's it. Uh, I'm starting to get rambly and uh, repeating myself, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful.